Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to you guys. Hope you're having a lovely Sunday. Sunday in general. <laughs> yes, because I know we've been we've been watching amazing Dota, and right now we have for you Pacific Pink versus Ascender Sup uh, Superiors. This is the grand finals, and yes, unfortunately, our potentially our last game for today, right? Potentially, unless, unless Ascender Superiors can. Grab it back and you know bring it right back again so that we go to a game three here. That is absolutely correct because mm -hmm. Pacific Pink they've been looking so ridiculously strong. Merle Storm Spirit mm -hmm. actually managed to out sustain the Queen Mer of Pain. Merle Storm Spirit, my goodness, that's a thing of beauty. Okay, uh, yes, and of course you know we are from the female C League FSL for short, and uh, we're bringing you today tournament. Uh, actually, we've been bringing you for the past four days. You know, uh, JJ has been here all the while. Uh, I joined in the last two days, JJ, MVP. <laughs> and uh, yes, this tournament is brought to you by our lovely sponsors, Dreamcore, uh, Overdrive, Yahoo, Aftershock, Elgato as well as Super Solid. So, big shout out to our sponsors. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for sticking with us throughout this entire, you know, this entire Sunday. Uh, of course, we, you know, we've talked about this. This is the grand final. This is the best of three. This is already the second game. So, we could go to a game three if Ascenders win this. But if not Pacific Pink will take first place in this tournament here. So <laughs> looking forward to see what uh what ascenders I have left in the tank, you know, to oh. be able to put up a fight against the uh seemingly unstoppable force that is Pacific Pink. And check it out, they already go for the second pick uh Juggernaut where they actually have Ice Rx. Most likely gonna be Ice Rx. Yeah. Ice Rx, right? Yeah. Spirit Breaker, Juggernaut here. Uh, not your usual combination, but with a spray breaker, it kind of uh, signals that you wanna be fighting all the time. You've got insane catch as well, you know, and you play really hard to iron Jesus, and it's seventeen percent bash for you, a hundred percent bash, you know. Yeah. Aside, aside from that, you are probably gonna be seeing spray breaker running into the off lane, but then again, we're looking for a stable position five supporter can lane with right, this right. juggernaut against this tide hunter. Uh huh. I'm taking a look at most likely juggernaut. Rubik. Sorry, tide hunter is pretty annoying, right? I'm um, actually yes. looking at a Rubik here. Yeah. That's a great counter. Why is Steel. Rubik such a good counter? Steals Ravage. Steals Steel Soulbind. Oh, you just wanted to steal. Okay, so you want to see another. Uh, what we used to call Taka, right? But now it's um, yeah, Marodi, yeah. right? Who's yeah. going to be stealing that Ravage here? Yeah. I think it's going to be. Um, Marodi is going to play how Rubik if she wants to. So I think it's going to be great. She played brilliant Rubik's, right? Previously, so. Uh, we'll be looking forward to see another Rubik here. But sure. one good thing about Ascendant Superiors is such that they actually have the last and final pick. Mm -hmm. So in this case, Ascendant Superiors, they can look for the counter pick against Mer. So they have, they will have that advantage. You know, mm -hmm. Mer, so far Pacific Pink seems to be riding a lot on uh, Mer's tempo. Right. And if she gets shut down early, I think Ascendant Superiors should have a good time, or a rather easy time, or better time than last time. Mm -hmm. And NM on the other side. Plays a very mean off lane. So in response to this high hunter pick, I really like the Juggernaut response, knowing that the Anchor Smash no longer pierces spell immunity. Mm -hmm. So the Juggernaut is great. Just want to pair with a great, uh, good support that can is able to lock yeah. down and helps with the team fight. I think Rubik's the answer for that. All right, so Rubik should that be the answer for, uh, and that will be played by the post position for an ascenders. Uh, Marodi here, remaining. who has also been the drafter for the team, has been drafting incredibly well. Uh, but it just seems like you know Pacific Pink. I don't think the last game the draft was you know I don't think um Ascender don't think draft got drafted issue. right. I think the draft was actually quite all right. It's just that maybe the way things panned out in the end. Felt it, for me person personally, I just felt that all lanes kind of like fell down. Mid was rather okay. It's just it was support. okay, yeah. But the support rotation? I just thought the Pacific Pink supports were just so much more active. You saw their rotations, you saw how they secured the runes. Oh! And now they take the Oracle from themselves. You saw how good Oracle was last game. Mm. Uh, not, and, and the best part was that Oracle was great not for the False Promise, you know? It was great for the root, the, the uh, Fates Edict, Dyer the Fates Edict, the source of Purifying well. Flames, yeah. <gasps> Insane Team of Eye coming out from Pacific Pink. You've got the Grimstroke Pacific Ultimate, Pink you've got Ravage, you've got Rock as well, and uh... <gasps> they managed to get it! The Warlock and the Grimstroke. Oh, the Warlock Grimstroke combination! Oh no! Disaster! I'm trying oh, to think. No. Yeah, it's the drafter for Set of Superiors. I, decide, I don't know why they didn't really go for the Rubik. I think it's Rubik or Sanato was quite okay, but then... So, I think that means it's Taka, sorry, uh, it's uh, Marody who's going to be playing that Spirit Break Dot, right? I think Marody's going to go Oracle though. Marody's going to go Oracle? So it's a post 4 Oracle? Mm. Eternal, not Eternal Oracle? Oh, no, I think, yeah, you're right. Marody's probably going to play the post 4 Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker, yeah. Unless you want to... I, I don't quite like post 3 Spirit Breaker. It's not... 
not quite stable and well you have to pray really hard for RNG bashers, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> So when I play the support spray breaker, every time I run up to them I'm like bash <laughs> bash. bash Oh it's a bash, it's a bash, it's a bash. That means my next is not gonna be a bash. Yeah, so you just run up to the very easy. Just bash. toggle bash. You want to use bash, bash? Just toggle it. I just toggle it. <laughs> I, I don't know how to toggle bash. JJ, you have to teach me how to toggle bash. Can I play spirit break off? Sure, when you reach a higher rank. Obviously, oh, <laughs> I can't even kill party with you at this moment. I need to change my account. And Brewmaster! Yeah, okay, okay, oh, Brewmaster, okay. okay. But I've been going to go for that Brewmaster. Right, Brewmaster. She is a platinum rank at Brew, so. Yes! Another one of my star heroes being picked up by Bada Bing. <laughs> okay, thank you, man. They Amanda. pick for you, you know. Thank you, you. Amanda. They Amanda, you have a lot of, I, have, I give you a lot of respect. Wow, oh, this is so scary. The team fight coming out from Pacific Pink. Yeah. Well, they have Room Master to help like soften the team fight a little bit, but... But still, it's uh, Ravage into Rock into DP out here. And I'm That's pretty sure that as the fight goes Lina. longer, I don't even know if the Oracle and the, ju the healing ward from the Juggernaut will have enough sustain. You know, it's going to be Lina. I think it's just gonna be Yukai's Yuka, answer is just gonna be the uh, most likely. I mean, took it with the Ursa. Ascendus, they do need a combo breaker here. Cheers! Right? Damn! The Lina oh, took away. Got it. They took away the Lina. <laughs> ban on the Lina. And the last pick, Pacific Pink goes. Mm. As in, I'm thinking. Okay, I'm thinking of a similar combo breaker. I don't like Silence as the pick here, but something that functions similar to a Silencer, you know, that breaks the combo of Pacific Pink here. Silence okay. will be more like a nah. You because silencer, there's not gonna be a lot Ten of. I think, like I tell you, uh, like I said, this silencer is just not requires a hero. Five. She's this looking for something to be rainbow. Nah, not against DP. Not it's against not good. DP. It's not, good. Okay, not against DP. Dragon Eye is out. I'm looking. Okay, as weird as it sounds, I think Shadow Fiend is the best answer. But I highly doubt it. I really highly doubt the Shadow Fiend. But I think Shadow Fiend is great. Death Prophet is really low on health in the early stages again of the Raise game. It her forces now. her to get the silence early on, even if the Spirit Siphon is not enough to, so uh, to help her. Mm -hmm. Your race destroys Tire Hunter, the Cracker Shell does nothing yeah, for it. Right. Warlock Gotham gets shredded to Shadow Fiend because of the, the aura of the minus armor, you have the range. I think Shadow Fiend is the answer. But whether or not they have something better in mind, I don't think Kunga is the right answer. No, Kunga is definitely not the pick for me here. Uh, doesn't deal enough. Uh, I don't think it's control that they're lacking in this case, but maybe. If it's control, then maybe it's Kunga. Uh, but for Pacific yeah, if Pink. it's control, it's Kunga. I, I don't think. I think they're fine, you know, with a Brewmaster here. And if the uh, Spirit Breaker is able to get the right angles of the charge in, uh, it is not control they are lacking, but it does seem to be damage uh, because they're going to be playing very much around the Brew Out. If the Brew Out is not up, there's nothing they can do. See? They have Juggernaut though. So they want a faster paced, um, faster paced mid. Who is able to keep up with this spirit breaker who constantly charges around? You know, like every twelve seconds charge, every twelve seconds charge. Hmm, what's the safe name here? Pacific Pink may look for a life stealer. No. Okay, well, that will be the, the, the pick that rounds up Pacific Pink's draft. Very ferocious, very scary draft coming up from the side of Pacific Pink. Easily kited around though by Blue Master and Oracle. Oracle has the disarm. Oh yeah, the Oracle has Blue Master disarm, can lift yeah. them up. I don't think Troll is a very and good pick though. And the spirit breaker can bash right through um, spell immunity as well. Hmm, I think Pacific Pink just. I think Razor. Razor SF, maybe. Razor, I think Razor's okay. Seconds, Razor SF. They need something to tear down this Death Prophet fast. Ember Spirit? Oh, it's a Kunkka, so they oh, just like, go back to the Kunkka, which. Okay, it's a safe pick it's for them. It's alright, yes, I think. Uh, I don't think it's a response to. You Death quite, Prophet. you know, it's, it's very comfortable that Kunkka, right? So maybe they're gonna try to go for the comfort pick here. They lost to uh, Pacific Pink with the Kunkka. So it's gonna I be a round two for you, Kwai. Mm. It's gonna be her Kunkka again. Once again against Mo. So it's gonna be game two between Pacific Pink and Ascendant Superiors. What could be our final last game, Pacific That's right, Pink? Could be. One game away from taking away first prize, Ascendant Superiors. Two games left to go. One more game, one loss, and it's gonna be out for the tournament. And they have made it through that lower bracket all the way up to this finals here, and you know, they've been riding that uh, morale high, you know, from winning all your games, all their games today. So that could be something, you know, they ride off one. We'll see how this goes and how uh, G-Quad matches up against the fearsome Death Prophet, right? Kunga versus Death Prophet, how does this matchup go? I think personally, uh, I think the Spirit Cypher is going to be a pain in the ass for, the, for Kunga for sure. Mm -hmm. But with Kunga going for the double bracers, it should be able to withstand some of the damage there. Okay. Yeah, from Death Prophet's Q. Alright. Okay, so we'll see as we go into game right now. This could be our last game or we could proceed on to a game 3. 
if this, you know, uh, if Ascendus uh, does take this uh, game. So we will see, we will see. I think just judging my lineups alone, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Kunkka pick. Especially if you're picking Kunkka in the other side. I mean, it makes sense if you pick Kunkka in the Radiant. You can stack the yeah, Ancient. You can stack the Ancient camp, but. I think it's okay though. Running Kunkka is a very safe, tanky lane. You have to de burst damage. Alright, so let's just introduce the players, you know, Pacific Pink again. Uh, we're no, we're no, we're no uh, stranger to them. We've got NM on that Fierce and Tide Hunter that's going off lane. Sherry on the carry troll warlock going to safe lane. Naomi on the warlock who will be going to safe lane with that troll offering so much sustain. And as well as KJ on the Grimstroke going into probably going to the off lane. Mer on the death prophet here. I love this set by the way, it's so beautiful. She has a model helmet, mm -hmm. I really like it. Alright, and on the Dyer, who do <laughs> On the other Dyer side, we have Eterna playing the Oracle, I Star Rex going for her classic signical, signature Juggernaut, and in the mid lane, we have Yukwai playing a very comfortable, stable Kunkka. Moving down to the bottom lane, we're going to be seeing Butterbing playing her Brewmaster, the first time appearing, the platinum ranked Brewmaster. And right next to her will be the Captain, Meredy, playing the Spirit Breaker, the Space Cow, the Barra. Pumping in Bash level 1, believing in RNG. If you lose this game, just blame on RNG. If you win this, 17%. just blame it on skill. 17%. Doesn't know how to toggle Bash. Uh, simple, simple Dota logic. If you lose the game, just blame it on the Bash. If you win the game, it's all skill. So, right. SRX, wave a hand up. Mm. What is the high five? DJ gonna be moving in aggressively top. 30 seconds to battle. No, I think overall both both teams they will find out to the two one two strategy. It's mm -hmm. a very classic way to run the lanes. Yeah. I think this kind of, they might want to run NM solo eventually, but at this time, I think they might NM want. NM needs a little bit of support for yeah, now. Just right? for now, just for mm -hmm. now, just the early stages of the game. Going down. Go okay. KJ in place. They get the root onto the spirit breaker. No bash. 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 Uh, quick fingers, it is uh, Sherry who gets it instead, but Sherry takes a lot of damage, gets to slow out the clap from the Brewmaster. And the Brewmaster will be able to get a couple of hits into Sherry, but Sherry will be able to regen up. Does have five, six tangles to work with. It looks like overall, I think bottom lane should be rather stable though. Brewmaster just chase. I mean. Hmm, I really have my eyes on Butterbing right now because she's played two of my favorite Brewmaster, heroes, two of right? my yeah. best heroes, Brewmaster and Legion Commander. So, yeah, high expectations for the Platinum Brew, and we really want to see how things goes out. Playing into the troll, I think she, I think normal build just to get max out her stun. Oh, uh, slow sorry, Tanta at top lane, falling slightly low. Surprisingly, will be forced to use the self. As Ice Direct is already using a spin, maximizing the damage onto the troll, or onto the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter right. uh, Pacific Killer KG actually opted to go for the Stroke of Fate instead, actually. Misses the Stroke of Fate onto Eterna. Uh, I think I might have preferred an Ink Swan to the Tide Hunter, isn't it? Or no, because no. if you get it now, there's no point since the Ice Direct can easily just spin oh, out the spin combination. Oh, right, right, right. And not to mention, you see what KJ is doing? Or, or what maybe I the meant? silence, in fact, actually. The silence would have been very nah, good on the Oracle. Very rare to see people walk the silence. Mm -hmm. so and then she gets the ink saw as well, so she's able to run away from that, um, from the stun. I'm sorry, from the spin of Ice Direct. No, this is very interesting. It's such that we see take a look at Titan Hunter's build. She actually went for the stout shoot and the single point in the Kraken Shield, understanding that <laughs> the uh, stout shoot does uh, not stack with the Kraken Shell. Mm -hmm. But wait, she has a point to do it. It doesn't stack, actually. Yep, it does not. So, so I think it's a little hmm. bit of a misunderstanding. I thought, yeah, sometimes we see in the Tiger Hunter not go a single point to crack and shell, right? Yep. Mm. But it, as, that works well when you pair it with the Grim Shock, such mm. that you can actually maximize the soul by mid lane. Yeah, that's right. Mid lane, taking a lot of damage. Mer would sidestep uh, the Torrent as well, so that you require not going to be quite able to get that there slow onto the Death Prophet. Will salve up. Does have to say something again. He hides towards the tree, actually. They're hiding the walls there, so that, such that they would, they would think that he, I think it's such that she would be able, to, the walk will actually last longer past the night time. Mm. Okay. It's okay. I mean, don't you just want to ask your your support? You know, just drop me a ward in the career and then I'll. Be it's too it slow. Out. It's too it's slow. slow. I, I still feel it's really slow. Okay, I see the charge coming out here. It's on the mid lane. Yeah, but do you really want to charge 
uh, Mer, the Death Prophet, who does have oh. Spirit Siphon, actually doesn't have. Uh, only Wait, has it knocks her out of the Torrent. It knocks her out of the Torrent and um, combo players. <laughs> she will be My able will to grant uh, require the space. Yeah, in the I'll give her a little bit of space. So, Spirit Breaker trying to get something done. Does have two points. Uh, does have two levels, so now it has a bash as well as, the, as, well as the stun. So, as the charge, I mean. KJ trying to be a pain in the butt and trying to interrupt the pull from uh, the from Eternal. I really, like what, I really like what KJ does. I, I think she oh, has great Oh, Okay, she get the stun does here. Get the stun gets out. And oh, they actually can they can you purge this actually? Wait, this yeah, she purged it off. Yeah, she purged it off, right? Oh, KJ with yeah. the tango, she is looking quite yeah, strong. Yeah, KJ still the south as well, so he's not too worried about that. Yeah. Another charge out actually on the KJ. Gonna get the bash. One more bash. Uh, the root is out as well. Oh my goodness, I think this is oh, like a dead KJ. Oh, and then first, first blood, blood Eterna with the help of that Spirit Breaker. Gonna get that first blood onto the Grimstroke, who is clearly too far. And now NM caught out of position. Uh, it's gonna be spun down for a bit. Uh, does have to gush to slow him down, but Tidehunter, a big strong tanky boy, 800 health to work with. He's gonna be fine. And instead here, so Merody just tried to charge it on the Death Prophet, but you know, Death Prophet does a spirit siphon up, so... Yeah, I really like uh, what Merody's doing here. They know that Mer is the one that's setting the temple, mm -hmm. so she's applying a lot, a lot of pressure in the mid lane. Something that's really different. Maybe that's the reason why they wanted to go for that first pick, Spirit Breaker. Right, but... They, want, they okay. wanted a hero that can able to pressure down the mid lane. Mm -hmm. But Spirit Breaker, does he re does, does Spirit Breaker, is Spirit Breaker really very good at pressuring? Though? Yes, I think he's a great hero that can gang mid lane so frequently put this... I don't know, just natural, normal harass. But All right, another charge on KJ. KJ here. Okay, Spirit Brewmaster does get the uh, slow off. He does have the Shadow Word on him. So he's going to be taking a lot of damage from Naomi, the Warlock, who is here to back up uh, KJ, the Grimstruck. So a lot of damage coming out. Uh, did somebody south? Oh uh, uh, yeah, it's Grimstruck just south. It's Grimstruck that south, okay. <gasps> so much damage coming out from the end. I think with more damage you're taking down, the yeah, Brewmaster does go down in the end. Oh no, taking too much damage. And it will be Murali that goes down in the end. Disaster strikes at 5 minutes. And then uh, at 5 minutes, and that means the Bounty Rune will go. Two to the way of uh, two, three, three, oh, actually two. Three, 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 it's three for one, isn't it? No, Eterna gets a uh, two. Is it? No, Eterna gets one. Sorry, Eterna yeah, gets Eterna one. Yeah, one. so it's three for one. So Silver Mario slow play something different from Pacific Pink's normal games. The King guy is still doing very well, you know, twenty six to one as compared to the twenty four and six of the Death Prophet. So I think it's too fairly even. Still I mean, fairly Death Prophet did get right. the denies. Okay. Oh, a lot of damage. Death Prophet does have a bottle. Yeah, okay. that's the thing about Kunga. She's actually deciding to go for the armlet mm -hmm. instead of the double braces. The purge onto the Tide Hunter. You gotta stress spin her down. But NM still very tanky. Gets the anchor smash off as well. Dealing so much damage to Ice Star X. And that Kraken Shell is actually popping in, you know. Uh, relieving some of the damage. Does have a south. It's gonna probably pop it in the trees. Eterna hanging around, wanting to purge it, remove it. And that bot lane instead of going on to Mirodi, the uh, Spirit Breaker now. Sherry throwing so much damage out. We'll go instead for Bada Bing. Bada Ding, uh, uh, sorry, the Spirit Breaker does go down in the background. And my goodness, KJ getting a double kill on that off lane Brewmaster as well as Spirit Breaker. Uh, and I go back to top lane again to get another spin down onto NM. Okay, uh, I saw is gonna try to deal a lot of damage. Uh, oh no, Ty Hunter had just solved up. If he can get an anger smash off, but he's not too worried about it. The charge coming out again, uh, but the charge is super, super far away. Still coming in from the Spirit Breaker. Wants to kill and get a kill on the NM, but NM does have 3 points into the anchor smash. It's gonna be a very difficult kill. Um, we'll see how it goes. The charge in is coming in. But he's going to go under the tower here. Does get it and the perch as well comes up here. Uh, does it remove? Yeah, no, it doesn't remove anchor smash. And the spin will actually take down that tide hunter at long last. Three, four to two. So I guess it's still. Okay. okay. <laughs> what did they do? Such a so this is. Oh, okay. I'm just. Uh, I wonder how is it that it works with uh, uh, Oracle here because uh, Oracle put the perch onto the uh, onto tide hunter, uh, and. Spirit Breaker came in range, but oh, lane, it actually. didn't. Be quiet. Okay, I'm gonna she loses the one we want to the Death Prophet, but she does get the return kill. Yeah, she does get the return kill. The same time, but forces a lot of rotations here. Okay, so question is right. When you perch the enemy and your teammates stand nearby, they actually don't get perched. What? But 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 if you perch the enemy, sorry, if you perch your teammates and the enemies are nearby, it roots them. Oh yeah, that's yeah, true, isn't it? Right? No? Yeah, I just realized that. Wait, isn't it how it works? Uh, as in, no, I just realized. Okay, I thought always it will it will work as long as uh, any hero is in the area. 
Yeah, regardless of who you put it on. Oh, Cyrex. Yeah. There is Ravage available, but... There's Ravage available, and uh, my Cyrex not quite 6 yet. Uh, almost there. Looking at the side of... I think so far, only 8 minutes into the game. <coughs> and both sides still look fairly okay. Don't exactly see a significant advantage for either side at this point of time. Dyer's Knowing that they're one game away, the Dyer have to play this game extremely carefully. Alright, they're gonna get a spin onto NM, but it's not gonna be enough damage honestly here. This guy still has a Ravage, remember that, okay? And right now there is still... Oh, they silence him up as well? No, but in the end, if you do pop the Ravage here, no... Uh, Omni, Omni Stash, oh. he goes out. Oh, <gasps> but he jumps to the creep! She tried, How I... unlucky! Oh, oh she tried no. to do the clicking thing. When you try and control the Omni Slash, yeah. but when she clicked top, the center was there. Yeah, oh my gosh. It that's wasn't even that cool. near, you know? It was like here. Yeah, that's the thing here, about right? using the. Code. Oh my goodness, that was. Oh my god, the luck RNG on that. That's what happens when you try. <laughs> but meanwhile, when bottom lane. You try lane, your best, but you don't succeed. The charge goes on to the troll warlock, but he does have to back up out that to the warlock. What are we Not to worry. Trying? The troll misses. Get the uh, level 6. You cry. You made a rotation, but for not. And the charge is going back again onto um, the poor uh, uh, troll waller who just got a staff up now the stun is not going to hit from the uh, grim stroke the stroke will hit though and uh, deal a lot of damage to that spirit breaker but spirit breaker doesn't really care he's that hero who runs around all the time uh, tries to get things done so we'll head back to the base for a quick refill Jimo just farming up the stacks in the jungle she's she has reached a level 9 whereas Konka is still level 8 at this mm -hmm. point of time she's on her way to level 10, almost 2 levels higher than Oh Kunkka. my goodness, it's gonna be a few spat, man. I mean, she had this, uh, the, I think she killed Konka first before. Yeah, she, she did kill Konka first. So she does have the experience advantage. Mm -hmm. So both calls, mid lane both position 1s and 2s on the side of the Radiant, does seem to be performing quite well. Despite uh, losing those first blood, I'm gonna look at the uh, Spirit Breaker. They're gonna be positioning aggressively for the five minute, ten minute runes. I'm sorry, and now uh, I think Spirit Breaker will get that stun onto him. The Inks will uh, probably will go down the end. Now KG on a killing spree. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. By the way, she's still trying to secure herself that level six before going going aggressive at all. So close, so close. For the rest of the lanes. I mean, juggling on both Isarex and uh, Yukai do retreat to the jungle, trying to snag, snatch up as much farm as he can. Uh, TP pops the ultimate. It's going to be taking down this tier uh, one at top here. Ravage is available very, very soon. And uh, there is nothing much that the Dyer will do to get this on the road, you know. Uh, they do have Juggernaut in the vicinity, but Juggernaut is not able to do anything by himself. And now six, the charging. Bing. Okay, the charging from the Spirit Breaker is going to go on to the DP. There is Ravage. Spirit Siphon. Ravage from the sideline. Cash on the three. It's indeed the Brewmaster. Brewmaster not able to get anything off the Omni Stash is cool, but it hits onto uh, more of the heart than anything else. And right now they're going to take down the Spirit Breaker as well. Spin up from Isarax. Not able to really cancel that TP. Oh. I think Bush have just popped that ultimate straight out. Yeah, the slow. that's right. I think so too. Uh, I, I, think, I guess you just want to be conservative a little bit. Just slow him down, then out. That's not what? a good review of that sticks of the Brewmaster. They do take down this tower at bot as well. This is 8 to 3. Mm -hmm. Still slightly in favor of Pacific Pink. But I, I still think that uh, Dias will have a chance of coming back as long as it gives Ice Direct some, some more f some more farm. She is still seeing it once She's going for drums. We'll have it in a bit. So it's still quite interesting to see actually some of the heroes, they are still staying st staying in their respective lanes. Not exactly going out for those full four man rotation gangs right. at this moment. But this kind of, uh, you know, depends on... Uh, on uh, Yukoi right as the mid laner here for Yukoi to really do something about it. She's going for an uh, armlet. Do you think this is the item to go in this game? Mm, I think it gives a good strength and overall... I don't I don't really... See, I mean I'm not a Kunkka player to be fair but I'm not a huge fan of the armlet. At this point of time, I'm still, I still like the classic Spirit Vessel and Radiance just because it's just so tanky as Kunkka. Mm -hmm. But then again... Maybe it's just like a, you know, a cheap uh, salvage item, salvage things item, right? Yeah, I mean it's a great status item, something mm -hmm. that can make buff you up a lot more. Okay. Let you stick throughout the fights. There okay. is DP out again in about 20 seconds. Because overall, I don't really, until now I'm still not a huge fan of armlet. I mean, sure, it gives you additional bonus damage. 
Uh, it makes you extremely tanky even though there's the rum through the uh, the boat's rum. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, it's not a hero that really benefits from the tank speed. I start X to spin TV out, aware that you know team the rest of the team from the Radiant, uh, they are here Pacific Pink. They want to kill off that pesky juggernaut, who seems to be the only one who's doing decently well, you know, on the side of the Dyer here. Gunga is struggling a little bit, trying to get. I think the armlet's coming in on the career. Yeah, Amla is yeah, Amla is coming in on the career, so that'll be Kunkus first item here. And maybe he might be able to do something with it. I don't know, I'm still really I'm not a huge fan of Kunka being a response pick. But then again, this is a terrorist the, it is their last game, so mm -hmm. I guess I suppose picking their comfort hey, hey, heroes. Don't is so negative, more. okay? Don't say that immediately in their last game like that. Oh yeah, I mean I see that they're one more game away from getting eliminated, mm -hmm. so I get it why they want to pick those comfort heroes, but then again, you really want to pick heroes that can counter. You do have last pick. You pop the DP out, you've got Ravage as well, it's gonna go on to two. Silence onto the Brewmaster, not able to get that out. Spirit Breaker goes down, Brewmaster drills down. Uh, nothing much that Yu can really do, you know, tries to pop the Torrent, it slows down the Golem, that's about it, but then, you know, will be used up in the air, thrown down, put down, sucked down. They put the Oracle out onto him, but then the Oracle out is not able to do much. He's gonna try TP out, there is no, there is, oh no, they actually get the stun. And they're gonna be able to root him up, take him down. There's a 12 to 3 right now, and almost team wide because well, Yuko and Yen on the high ground decides not to join that, mm, that bloodbath, you know, he decides to go to the mid lane instead. Uh, with that insane team fight combination, they're now what? 14 minutes hitting tier 3, hello? Game even faster than before. Uh, but are being unable uh, to get off the A uh, buyback from the Kunka? Uh, Kunka didn't have that much time to go actually. Now the charge in from the Spirit Breaker is gonna hit onto the Warlock. No, actually Warlock cancels the no sorry, the charge is cancelled by DP. And yes, Spirit Breaker is gonna go down. DP does get caught up by the Torrent as well as a big Tidebringer, but DP just sucking back the health again. Uh, is there anything much that Butterbean can really do? They get the Omni Slash yeah, onto Sherry. Uh, Sherry is going to be able to get rooted up actually. Oh, stunned up by the... Okay, that's a big kill. Uh, going the way of Ice Direct, so will he be able to get any more? They get, so they're going to get the stun and everybody else from the side of the raid have already gotten out. I think this is what Butterbean should have been doing from the start. You don't just... I, I understand that you're the tank of the team and the initiator. But in this scenario, when you're picking Boom Master into heroes with silence and stuns, you don't really want to like go in and start off the slow and split. You just want to go in from the sidelines, split straight away and start that controlling. Out, right? yeah. Not That's jump in and uh, you don't have the luxury. To yeah, you don't exactly have the time. Not to mention you don't even have dagger at this point I time. don't even have dagger, at this point. Uh, and, and it doesn't, and Butterbean doesn't seem to be rushing a dagger either. It seems to have the blads queued up instead. Yeah, Is for that something you agree over, with? I think overall it's aura. Vlaz is good for the early tower push as well, but like I said, the reason why they're going for the Vlaz is more or less team. Because it's just, at this point in time, they can't really afford to be going off astray. They need to be together. It's just, the game is just getting super hard. Pacific mm -hmm. Pink is just getting stronger and stronger, minute by minute. Pacific Pink playing beautifully around their outs, right, don't you think? Every time, you know, both uh, Exorcism as well as the uh, Ravage is up and the Rock is up, you know, they start creeping up together and they take objectives and... Ah, it's just well played by... Pacific Pink. So far, I think Pacific Pink, they're moving in really, really fast. Naomi getting those golems at the right timing, stacking the stuns together with the Ravage and the Golem, making full well that Boom Master can't slip. There won't be any follow up from the Juggernaut. I like this Warlock. Trying to push out the lanes for a bit. Uh, we'll get that in. Okay, I think going to Roshan actually. They popped the Exorcism for this. I don't think Dai are in a position to contest this at all. So uh, they will get this Roshan more or less for free. You know, Tide Hunter here as well to get uh, a little bit more damage onto Tide, onto Roshan himself. So, okay, this Roshan is going to go down really quick. Uh, who will the Aegis go to actually? Troll. Sherry? Troll. Sherry gets the Troll. Yep. Sherry gets the Aegis. Okay. 17 minutes. 17 Roshan. minutes. Roshan. Roshan. Sherry Not does much. pick up a diffusal. Right? Oh, Something you don't really is... see very common. Like I said, I, I still think that the Sanjay Yasha build on the Troll Warlord is still rather common. Mm -hmm. But I really like this change of pace going for the diffusal. If she locks onto this Brewmaster, Brewmaster is going to completely run out of mana, unable to get the split off. Right, right, right. So this is just brilliant for the, I mean, the initiation heroes on the side of the Dire, right? Okay, and that will be the shrine gone. So now they are going for this mid here too. 
Oh, they're gonna show all this up. Okay, they're gonna go for it. Will they be able to get anything out of this? Yes, they're both silenced. They're gonna try to hit down the creep. They're gonna try to hit down the Phantom Embrace, but no Oracle will drop down for an Oracle. Does have a buyback, but I don't think they want to use it because they're gonna defend. They want to defend up the high ground. And at the moment, the creeps are pushing in in the favor of the Dire here and having taken down this bot here. Uh, the bot here, so it's gonna be relieving a little bit of the pressure and may force the Radiant back. A little bit, and it's gonna be another regeneration room. This is the regen room this game. I really feel like there's been a ridiculous number of regeneration runes here, right? I've seen more it, regen It's just not me, right? It's more than anything else, damage. right? I've not seen as many double damages or haste. I think I've seen very little haste runes actually. Like, I've seen maybe two or three. But regens were something like a six. Oh, well, Astarax getting bumped Astarx. into the Titan Hunter, but both of them just saying a quick hello. Hello, and then they're gonna walk away. Yeah, they just did a quick high five, a tap on each other's shoulder, and they just walk right yeah, back to each other's shoulder. Uh, Sherry will just takes that shrine easily. Oh. oh, but they see Sherry around in the region here, they're gonna charge after the Warlock, Warlock, and they put the. Oh, they immediately drop the Omni Slash onto the ty onto the, the Warlock here. Okay, uh, where else will they be going for? Sherry is going for the uh, Oracle here, but it's still not Tide Hunter. Sorry, the uh, Troll Warlock is gonna be controlled up. Uh, gonna throw the boat onto him right now. Okay, so in the end, the Warlock, sorry, Oracle does go down in the end, uh, but they do manage to kite the, tr the troll around, you know, who has yet to get a BKB. So, uh. Okay, uh, one for one. I think uh, they will take what they can get. There's more gold, of course, than XP going the way of the losing team right now, which is uh, unfortunately a sender. Oh my goodness, win rate, win probability, almost 100% for the side of the Radiant. But we'll see if a sender superiors can prove uh, Dota buff wrong and says, you know, uh, stats are not all everything there is to it. It is determination, it is grit, it is morale, it is teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. So as you can see Pacific Ping already knocking under the tier trees as Merity tries desperately to hold her ground but she will fall prey to the Death Prophet's exorcism. It's gonna be Spirit Breaker falling to the ground, 30 seconds off. That's right, they still have a Ravage, they still have to troll out and they still have to rock. So they can reset a bit as they wait for the next creep wave to come in and uh, push high ground. There is still a good amount of time left on Exorcism here. I can't ping out stuff, huh? I can't see stuff like that. So I can't... Oh, right here. Okay, 11 seconds remaining here. And they're gonna get the Grim Stroke out as well. Slow down onto the Oracle. Oracle silence as well. Yeah, they should off. Actually, the boat is gonna hit onto Tide Hunter. Will they be able to blast him off before he gets the Ravage off? Actually, they drop the rock. He catches on the two. Oracle drops down anymore. He has no buyback as well. Uh, I don't think they even need to get the buyback. You're gonna even get the, 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 what do you call it? Uh, the Ravage out. But, uh, you know, Spring Breaker charges in. Is there anything he can really do? Tide Hunter such a big, strong, tanky boy. Uh, it's not really going to be able to, to be too worried about the stuns coming out from the Spirit Breaker. They're just going to be focusing on objectives and take down this bottom tier lane of Rex. Okay, charging again from the Spirit Breaker onto the Tide Hunter. I'm not sure that's a hero you really want to go onto. Now, Death Buffer coming here to back out his friend. Ravage finally popped as well. Captures onto all the members of uh, the, the Dire and then they're going to go down. Now, Yukoi as well drops the boat, has nothing left already, and now everybody gets sent. Sends everybody sends scattering back to the fountain. Oh no, there's nothing much that the Juggernaut and the Oracle can do, huh? It's a 20 minute, 2 lanes of Rex, and a 1 lane of Rex actually, and I think they'll be going for definitely more because they know the Kunkka has no buyback, is Kunkka is pretty much dead, Death Prophet, Unstoppable Force, they don't have any more uh, ultimates, but you know, it's, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal, honestly, and now the charge, Spirit Breaker is up, oh no, there's a silence onto the Juggernaut, is he going to be able to get anything off? Yes, he does. He managed to get silence off, but again, unlucky with the so unlucky with the uh, unfortunate spins right now. Uh, what did people take down? KG at the very least? No, the stun hits on to Juggernaut instead, and oh my goodness, it is this. Uh, can, you, can you imagine there's a Grim Stroke just running after the, 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 the post one Juggernaut? <laughs> now oh, the Spirit Breaker charges in, but no. Charge. Okay, the Grim Stroke blinks away. Uh, oh, and KJ. Get a okay, unstoppable kill streak going the way of uh -huh. the uh, Spirit Breaker. Equal. But at the expense of that top lane of Rex, was it worth? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, okay, right. oh, catch! <laughs> getting with the bad <laughs> And then... That was a cocky, Merely cocky pushing her back into the base. But that was a cocky, cocky, but you know, side. That was a cocky TP anyway. The Oracle goes down to the burst damage, and uh, oh, Aegis is being reclaimed. And uh, well, Meredith trying to do her best right now. She's going for the last hurrah. The boat will finish off Tide Hunter by Kunkka. Uh, they are, you know, they are eternal enemies right now. And now, uh, oh, okay, they're gonna pull back the Death Prophet. They do have the Xbox spot right there, but she gets a four. She gets a four man silence right now. And Sherry's still here to back out her friends. Uh, there is a healing walk coming in, so it's gonna be very difficult to do that. So. 
would it be suitable for this in the end? Yes, this will you get the Xbox as well, the, the Death Prophet on to into the Torrent as well, and the Charge are coming out, but the beautiful silence coming out. Oh, the Charge! Death Prophet, would you be able to burst her down? Yes, they do! Unstoppable kills trigger in the way of Meredith. All her charges paying Good off, job, and now they have Hold this troll! The troll Hold off. Off. They actually missed the combo, they drop him down. Uh, will he be able to run away? Do you have any no, more catch? Not. Yes, a stun that comes out, followed by the Xbox spot as well. Uh, they are linked up by the Grimstroke ulti, so there's not much damage coming in, but more stuns coming in. Everybody run towards the troll wall, I know troll still lives! Are you kidding me? He gets the Xbox, finally a dominating kill streak going the way of RCIX. Alright, Ascender is showing some signs of life here after two lanes of Rex have Come gone back down. indeed! That's the call, I can't tell, is it just friendly banter or is it just a taunt? Alright, so in spite of that, of uh, losing, you know, I think it was two unstoppable kill streaks as well as one, I think it was a Wicked Sick uh, going the way of the Dire. Uh, they are still 12k ahead, huh, on the Radiant. Well, Ascender Superiors, they are holding the ground much better than the previous game. Holding their best. Alright, they're doing oh, their best right. standing on their last lane of it, uh, standing on their last lane of Rex. Merody is gonna charge away, he'll be fine. Merody doing so much work that fight actually, you know, getting those... The moment charge is off, she looks for the target to go on to. And uh, okay, KJ coming in aggressively. Uh, does not Blink does not disjoint the uh, Phantom Embrace actually. So even though Brewmaster blinks away, uh, will not be silenced up. Still does not have the Primal Split yet. That is a kind of long cooldown on level one. So she's got to be very careful about the way uh, Primal Split is being used. Uh, but at the same time, Ravage is up. Uh, Exorcism is not quite yet, and there is no more Aegis on the Troll. So. Um, they've got to be a little bit careful. The Ascender did uh, take a very convincing fight when they were when Pacific Pink was split up. So. Yeah, True Waller actually finishing off the Sanj and Yasha with the Diffuser. Uh, they are holding the ground pretty strong. Pacific Pink struggling a little bit getting to the high ground. They are left with one mid Rex. So Ascender Superior, they will up. smoke up. Uh, all ultimates online, the 15 Brewmaster out in 15 seconds time, please split on the bat. Please, please split on the sidelines here, do not jump in, because you're gonna get silenced up, you have no BKB. It's gonna be uh, quite tough. And oh my goodness, there's an Arcane Rune as well as the Exorcism, oh my goodness, there's an Arcane Rune Exorcism, it's gonna be up in 100 seconds, oh my goodness, how is that balance? You can see Meredith actually sneaking in from the background. Oh, oh in the Warlock background. Actually, they killed down. the Warlock actually in the background. There's a big chunk of the team fight taken out. Okay, and now Ravage. they're going to try to control the Troll Warlock out of the bot here. Split. Okay, but the split is coming out as well now. Okay, the Ravage Lava hits Bing. onto so many and on a high ground now here. They're going to take down the Oracle in the end. Uh, Death Prophet, you know, trying to take down the Kunkka who's silenced up still. The charge coming out again from Meredith. Uh, they're going to try to save that Kunkka, but Kunkka is going to go down. Oh no! Kunkka goes down in the end! And the, the healing ward was not enough and now Ice Rx caught in a very, very bad position. Okay, uh, Alright, good job. Tide fall. Okay, uh, they're gonna control the tide up as well by Sherry. So incredibly strong with that. Oh no, with the with the, the, the minus armor as well. And in the end, GG is gonna be called. Congratulations to Pacific Pick. They are going to be the winners of FSL. And uh, Ascenders, they tried hard, man. They played the entire day. They played their hearts out. And I think in their hearts, you know. They're probably the people's they really champion, isn't it? Extremely well, Center Superiors. Pacific Pain making them look so easy. But for them, they are really one strong team. It's just that the difference in mechanics and overall team experience is evident. Pacific Pain wins first place, Ascended Superiors second. Wow. Well, yeah. All right. So it's been a wonderful full day of Dota. Actually, the past two days of Dota, if you right, JJ. Yep. How the, you know how was it casting four days of Dota? Well, it was really, to be honest, it was exhausting. But because of all of these really exciting games, it really kept me, I mean, it really kept me on edge. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I have to be, I'm very grateful to witness such a lot of all of these really great female players in the uh, Southeast Asia region. And of course, quick shout out to our wonderful sponsors once again. We have Dreamcore, Elgato, Overdrive, Super Solid, Yahoo, and Aftershock. It's been a really exciting season. Oh my goodness, I am so, yes, I like what you mentioned, you know, I, I really am thank thankful for the opportunity to definitely be uh, watching all these uh, wonderful players, you know, bring us beautiful games. I mean, look at the one-hour game, right, bef between uh, Rejoro Wings as well as uh, Ascender Superiors, right? You remember that game? That was really, really yeah. close. Ascender <laughs> Superiors. So close. It was actually like a TI, it was like TI level kind of uh, finals. Yeah, and I actually found out that two of the players from Ascender Superiors are actually from Singapore. So, oh, Singapore. yeah, we have Meredith and Bada Bing, <laughs> so yeah, actually quite... Cool. It's quite cool. For sure, for sure. 
Mm -hmm. These two teams, mm -hmm. Sunday Superiors, actually fought their way throughout the lower bracket all the way to the grand finals. That's and right. They're just really remarkable. Right, but of course not to take away anything from Pacific Pink who played very well. Congratulations to the winner of FSL yet again. And uh, I think... That's it, right? Yeah, that or concludes the end of our season. That concludes the end of the thanks season. For yeah, thanks for staying thanks tuned. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm uh, Jay John. You can follow me on Instagram at J-I-T-J-U-A-N. That's right. And I'm Ashley. You can follow me at Ashley Rita Wong on Instagram. So, yes, we will see you guys maybe sometime soon again. Uh, maybe when SF, maybe when our league starts. Maybe. Yeah, when there's another <laughs> league. When there's another league, they'll probably, you'll probably see us around. So, thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be... Signing off right now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.